section now and before we are going to continue our chapter surface property we have already learned about surface toughness and friction now we are going to continue the second part of friction which is wear and wear resistance so basically the question is that uh, what is uh, wear resistance and how do we define it so uh, if you uh, take a look at a gear surface you will notice that there are some uh, protrusions there are some scuff marks okay so they are basically a result of wear process basically happening so basically what wear is ray wear is basically removal of material uh, during the course of sliding or slipping of two surfaces or two solid objects together and what is wear resistance wear resistance refers to material's ability to resist uh, material loss by some mechanical action which is going on uh, by wear resistance we also mean the ability to resist aggressiveness of wearing medium so if there is some aggressive wearing occurring during uh, a process and within that process basically you have to see how good your surface is resisting the amount of wear and the amount of material loss that is about to happen so how good you uh, design and develop your surface the wear resistance directly depends on that so here in this picture if you can see here on your uh, left hand side uh, you can see a new sprocket and when i am going to put this bicycle sprocket on a bicycle with chain then this is what is the resulting end on your right hand side so you can see that there has been significant amount of wear that has occurred where it means that wear has some technological and economical impact significance because it can change the surface of the uh, material as well as it can change the shape of the whole sprocket as well you can see some deformations happening on the sprocket teeth etc so what happens is that for manufacturing process or for manufacturing tools uh, the tool life is basically affected the dimensions of the tool the deformation occurs on the tool and the quality of parts produced is also affected so as you can see that the economic implications is that it costs to about one to four percent of the national uh, gross national product uh, for industrialized nations so let's take a look at what is simply wear wear is basically damaging gradual material removal or even deformation of a solid object because of the sliding or because of the contact that occurs between them irrespective of the motion the motion can be reciprocatory or it can be rolling it could be a different kind of motion that will cause them to interact with each other now the causes of care can be mechanical or chemical okay so by chemical means also you must have heard chemical polishing chemical etching you can re uh, basically remove some material so as you can see in this figure we in figure a uh, we have got some uh, wire brush profile uh, the unworn surface the blue surface is the unworn surface and after the wearing process what happens is that there is significant uh, difference in the protrusion or the asperities that occurs so the asperities have basically reduced so sometimes what happens is that wear due to the wearing process the amount of rz okay rp or rv the reference parameters which corresponds to the height of peak or the uh, depth of uh, valley has also changed you can see that uh, it has basically resulted in smoothening or polishing of the material so wear can basically uh, polish a rough surface as well but wear can also uh, roughen a polished surface as well so it has both characteristics it depends on what kind of environment was given during the wearing process so with an or if you want to know about a simple example then if you're writing on a whiteboard then basically what happens is that the chalk that is basically being written on the board then th that chalk basically goes through the wear process and the material is removed from the chalk and it is deposited on the blackboard so that is also one type of uh, wear and specifically it is a type of adhesive wear where the material from one sliding object is deposited or adhesives is to the other part of the sliding object that contributes to adhesive wear 
so these are uh, some of the concepts of where it can be beneficial sometimes and it can not be beneficial it can result in significant amount of material loss significant amount of deformation the infringement amount of tool life can basically decrease and perhaps this could lead to uh, reduced in uh, reduced quality of the products so here is another example of a manufacturing process in which you can see that you have got a very nice and new drill bit okay and that drill bit has to be now reground i need to resharpen it if i want to use it again and this is the dull drill bit now the drill drill bit is not going to produce good results it will produce sparks during the manufacturing process it will produce a very rough uh, inner surface or inner lining of the holes that it is going to drill so my tool should be very sharp it should have uh, sharp edges it should not be deformed it should have perfect rake angle it should have perfect helical angle etc so that it can perform its function of drilling holes so if wearing occurs then it significantly impacts the end product that is produced so you guys are going to see how basically a uh, drill bit which is made of different uh, materials so we have got an uncoated we have got titanium aluminum nitride coated and a, a hidden secret of an industry well coated uh, drill bit and you can see that different coatings uh, uncoated you can see the performance of uncoated material and coated material and you will realize that how quickly the uncoated tool drill bit becomes blunt and you can see the sparks are being produced and those sparks mean that the tool has already become blunt so you can observe the number of cycles that uh, different types of coatings uh, produce and how immensely it can enhance the performance and tool life of the material so coatings basically prevents wear prevents loss of material which in turn can enhance the life of the tool Here as an example you can see we have got a tool and then that tool has got an insert and as the wearing process starts then you can see that the insert material insert is losing material because of material loss. So perhaps uh, you can see how the wear process takes place when two surfaces are sliding and the life of the tool material can also decrease significantly. So here is an example of a perfect uh, surface okay you can see that you have got a very nice gearing system however after the uh, certain uh, life cycle of this gearing system certain amount of wear is definitely going to occur in the form of different types of wear so the implications of wear can be that it can result in uh, number one adhesion or adhesive wear where you can see some uh, different um, surface or different material being adhered to the surface and then it can lead to abrasive wear where you can see some digging or plugging action has taken place so you can see you have got some deep marks and ridges inside the surface so both surface have different characteristics however the implication is present now the gear will not perform its intended function so wear can generally alter a part surface its topography and it can result in severe uh, surface damage so here is an example of uh, basically a uh, roller bearing and that roller bearing has gone through significant amount of surface fatigue. I have given you the link and you guys can go and look at this case study what happens to roller bearings during the wearing process, what kind of different types of damages occur for roller bearing applications. <laughs> So when we talk about wear, there is another side of story and the another side of story is that sometimes uh, wear could be useful for us as well. So in case that the wear is useful, in cases where basically you want the surface to become polished because of the wearing process. So in general the surface topography uh, is damaged because of wearing process, however for machines such as our automotive engines what happens is that 
in the initial time there is running in period in running in period what happens is that our engine is new our cylinder bore is also new and it is uh, uh, bored uh, recently so when it is bored recently then it is going to have some unworn uh, basically uh, surface it will going to have some high surface uh, roughness same is the case for the piston cylinder skirt and the ring as well so what happens is that during the initial time of wear, wearing when the engine starts uh, for the first 1000 km what happens is that the running in period starts a uh, running in period when what happens is that the both the asperities break each other out and then the surface becomes uh, a little bit more less rougher and a bit more towards polished so for engine uh, applications in the first stage of uh, when the engine starts to run this uh, wear becomes important so that it smoothens the surface of the sliding and contacting surfaces so next we are going to have a look at uh, different types of wear uh, there are different types of wear such as uh, abrasive wear abrasive wear and we have got corrosive wear we have got erosive wear etc so these are some different types of wear that have distinct features as in the picture you can see this is got this is the turbine uh, blade and you can see significant amount of abrasion that has occurred on the blade so this blade underwent significant amount of uh, abrasive wear so what are the characteristics of these types of wear is something that we are going to learn so students let's take a look at uh, what is adhesive wear okay so uh, how do we uh, define adhesive wear so in adhesive wear as you can see in this figure we have got two sliding surfaces this is sliding surface number one or the upper surface this is the second surface so whenever there is uh, shearing that takes place between two surfaces okay then what happens is that you have got an interface in between okay at the interface or at the junction as you can see there is a junction also so what happens is that along this path along this sliding direction okay at the interface in this region of the interface okay as you can see in the circle mark what happens is that uh, this is the location where sliding takes place adhesive wear play, takes place adhesive wear is also called a sliding wear so basically what happens is that because of uh, two materials they want to shear away okay and they want to basically uh, do strain hardening so during uh, basically when they touch each other then first there is the elastic limit then after the elastic limit is uh, reached then the strain hardening occur so when the strain hardening occur uh, then because the materials are under pressure okay uh, asperities contact each other so you can see here the asperities have contacted each other okay now what happens is that the diffusion takes place okay which is the transfer of material from one to another okay so diffusion takes place and due to mutual solid solubility so it depends on, on the uh, basically compatibility of each material adhesive bonds are formed so here you can see that a bond is going to be formed okay and that is called a micro weld okay so now that uh, bond is formed and micro weld is formed now they are joined together however due to the sliding uh, 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 forces the tangential forces which are applied they will break up okay so when they break up then what happens is that a material is adhered to the uh, surface which is uh, stronger and the softer surface uh, where the material micro weld occurred also there is a hole remnant so this hole or this smearing actually is what is can be seen on the surface which is softer whereas on the surface which is harder we can see that the softer material has attached to the harder surface so these are uh, basically uh, this is basically the uh, concept of adhesive uh, where where the material is transferred basically okay from one surface to another this is due to high loads okay higher temperature and pressures which occur and this causes asperities to contact and spot weld each either each other and then later on they immediately tear apart now in more severe cases when the load is very very high then what happens is that uh, scuffing smearing tearing galling or seizure wear occurs and this contributes to adhesive wear can basically transform into uh, very high wear rate and the very high wear rates are called severe wear okay however there is another case in which you have got a surface okay and due to the increase in temperature what happens is that the oxidation took place 
so when oxidation took place what happened is that oxides are harder material when oxide are harder material then basically what happens they resist wear and when they resist wear then they can basically uh, result in the reduction in the wear process so oxidation wear or oxidative wear or the presence or production of oxide layer on the surface have a very good influence on adhesive wear sometimes it can act as a protective film resulting in mild wear which consists of very small weight particles so this is in general the concept of adhesive wear now in order to basically uh, reduce adhesive wear we have different variety of options for instance we uh, select materials that are less compatible with each other in terms of solid solution in terms of uh, mutual solubility so in this way they will not uh, basically diffuse together or micro welds are not formed then we can use material which have oxide which produce oxide layers easily then we can make uh, very hard coatings on both materials so that they don't destroy each other and then we can use appropriate lubricant on the interface so that the amount of friction and wear is reduced so these were some of the uh, basically uh, strategies to reduce uh, adhesive wear so here in this example you can see you have got a wear uh, a gear okay and on this gear this is the uh, pitch okay this is the pitch arc okay so adhesive wear is occurring either above or below the pitch line okay and now adhesive wear is in the form of scuff marks as you can see in this figure okay we can see that uh, the adhesive wear is what is called uh, micro welds are basically getting out the fragments are getting out of the material and the what remains is on the soft material so this is what happened uh, first a micro weld is formed okay and then due to the progression of the tangential load which is occurring due to the sliding forces uh, the fragment is removed and material is removed it sticks sticks to the one surface whereas it is removed from the another surface so there are different types of uh, applications in which adhesive wear comes up uh, for instance in piston cylinder gear contact cams and follower you can see that in the case of gears uh, you can see this example uh, similarly uh, there are different influencing factors uh, also for uh, the control of the adhesive wear process such as the surface roughness gear tooth size film thickness film thickness is basically the thickness of the lubricant so we will not go into that however these are there are various governing and controlling factors which are involved in adhesive wear next we are going to look into abrasive uh, adhesive wear uh, in in form of more details so here you can see scanning electron microscopy and optical microscopy of adhesive wear process uh, here you can see in this figure you have got a, a counter body in which you can see that uh, uh, a lot of this is the soft material aluminium 7075 so you can see that the material has been removed from this uh, aluminium and a lot of shiny phase is present okay so it means that from the softer body the shiny surface is present and the oxidized uh, part or what you call the adhesive welded part cold welded part has gone on to this uh, counter body uh, for chromium, chromium titanium nitride so basically chromium titanium nitride coating is very hard and its counterpart the one which was wearing with it was softer so uh, basically uh, for, 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 for the counter body of uh, chromium titanium nitride you can see that it has uh, got a more of a oxidized uh, surface layer so uh, so basically these are different uh, aspects of looking into wear uh, of uh, aluminium 7075 counter body and chromium titanium nitride counter body how does the adhesive wear progresses and causes in this uh, scanning electron microscopy you can see that adhesive worn surface you can see that a micro welded occur and then it has basically removed the material from this whole portion and this has caused a delamination delamination means that you've got basically a uh, coating and that coating has delaminated or basically come off okay so if it has come off then this is delamination so that part or whole chunk has come out so that is called the why they are saying it is a part of delamination process work so these are the wear tracks okay tracks means the direction of the sliding occurred in this in these uh, two and fro motion uh, here we can see adhesive wear tracks okay uh, we have got adhesive wear tracks here again uh, so using SCM scanning electron microscopy you can zoom into 1000 uh, magnification and then you can look into detail as to what happened uh, during the process uh, what are the different characteristics of different types of wear that have occurred so this is all about adhesive wear.
So students, next we are going to move on to abrasive wear. And in abrasive wear, basically uh, is caused by hard rough surface or a surface containing a hard protruding particle. So as you can see in this uh, uh, figure, you can see a protruding part of a surface and that protruding part of a surface is going to pluff and remove the material from the above surface. Okay. So there are two types of abrasive wear. Number one is uh, two body abrasion and number two is three body abrasion. So when what happens is that when the protruding particles, basically it basically removes the material it occurs uh, in the formation of uh, a chip a microchip is formed as you can see here as well so a microchip is resulted okay and uh, silvers are produced as a weight particles and you can see a lot of scratch marks are basically produced because of that protruding thing is basically creating a lot of scratches so this is more of a scratchy wear so the surface damage that occurs includes scratch marks scoring furrows grooves and polishing uh, there is one more thing is that uh, if the particle is removed it can get em embedded also so the particle has basically removed and embedded so there are two types one is two body abrasion and number two is three body abrasion in two body abrasion only the protruding uh, part of the surface is basically the one which is doing the scratching part whereas in three body abrasion you've got two surfaces and then you've got a a detached particle and that detached particle is basically doing the pluffing or scoring or scratch marks so in uh, these two body abrasive uh, action in two body uh, abrasion the abrasive action takes place between two sliding surface or between a hard abrasive particle in contact with the surface body and this is the basis for erosive wear also Eros erosive wear also occurs due to this one of these uh, phenomena in three body abrasion what occurs is that an abrasive particle is present and then uh, such particle is basically uh, carried out by the lubricant so if you have a lubricant and you are not doing filtering process then that particle will come again so it, you have to make sure that the lubrication has got some filtration mesh system that will remove the particle so this three body abrasion is uh, particularly important when you have a uh, lubrication based uh, uh, system so here also you can see that the hard particle uh, how it is formed and then how it further involves into the scratching and wearing process now we are going to look, take a look at the scanning electron microscopy of abrasive wear process you can see that all of them have got uh, grooves these are called grooves basically okay the scratch marks are present okay and then you've got the third body abrasive particles are also present these hard particles further result in the scratching and flowing of material so next we are going to look into another type of wear uh, subsurface fatigue so what is subsurface fatigue as fatigue you guys know already from mechanical engineering when you have got cyclic stress or repetitive stress and that stress is basically changing its amplitude or it's changing its uh, nature uh, repetitively then it has a significant and significant impact on the material the material becomes weak after repeated cycles of the stress so the same thing happens for uh, subsurface fatigue as well for instance if you can see you can see uh, an application of bearing roller bearing in which you've got uh, the inner cage the outer cage and in between you've got roller ball so what happens is that due to very high number of cycles uh, high stress is generated this causes cracks in the subsurface so this is so perhaps this is uh, the ball and you can see that a lot of pits and dents have been created on this uh, ball and you can see if you can are going to zoom in then you can see those dents uh, uh, microscopically as well so what happens is that due to those hard and soft particles uh, stress risers are created and when stress risers are created then deformation takes place and due to deformation uh, some kind of uh, basically uh, these particles create some dents and then due to these dents deformation takes place due to these deformation inclusions and faults are produced and because of inclusion and faults uh, subsurface cracks are produced so the cracks are produced within the surface and then that surface ejects out so then this sur surface form and due to that uh, delamination or the material removal uh, takes place and the material removal is very severe in subsurface fatigue based wear and the material uh, causes severe wear risks uh, in many 
uh, engineering applications. So there are different types of techniques for which we can control these kind of subsurface fatigue. For instance, we can improve the lubrication, we can increase the hardness, we can reduce the surface roughness, we can use uh, high pressure viscosity uh, coefficient, uh, we can avoid particle contamination by basically filtering out the lubricant. So there are various techniques by which we can reduce. However, you need to know that uh, subsurface micro cracks are formed when they are rep uh, re when repeated load cycles and stress of 5000 500000 psi are basically uh, impacted or imparted on the surface now these micro cracks uh, which are formed okay they are going to propagate and then they are going to result in the material being removed uh, the material that is being removed is called a pit okay you can see uh, we've got a pit that has been produced and if it uh, goes on to more severe wear then this is called spalling wear S P A W L I N G. spalling wear is basically produced other types of uh, subsurface fatigue includes flaking so a huge flake has removed peeling your further peeling further larger chunk or mechanical pitting so these are some of the names for subsurface fatigue now we are going to look at the scanning electron microscopy of subsurface fatigue so here you can see that uh, fatigue cracks are basically produced and those fatigue cracks have resulted in larger chunk of material being delaminated or peeled off so uh, a lot of material has been peeled off from subsurface uh, due to subsurface fatigue so now we are going to look and see that uh, we have got two types of uh, basically uh, fatigue wear one is fretting wear and one is a normal uh, fretting wear uh, sorry fatigue wear in fretting wear basically sm smaller uh, different vibrations are also involved so when you have got a repetitive cyclic load then there are a certain amount of uh, re minute relative motion by vibrations and some other forces are also involved which result in fretting phenomena which further accelerates the wearing and material removal process however in the case of normal cycling loading you can see that subsurface cracks are produced and then after the cracks are produced then they disintegrate in the form of uh, peels or in the form of pits that uh, contribute to severe wear next we are going to move into cavitation wear as the name suggests cavitation occurs in pumps okay in uh, in machinery which involves fluid so what happens is that basically uh, water vapor uh, or uh, oil pressure uh, when it is generated for pumps then it also sometimes what happen is that vapor bubbles are produced and these vapor bubbles are produced in the low pressure region and once the vapor bubble uh, moves to the high pressure region then they collapse and they implode when they implode then what happened that high pressure impinge or impact basically uh, tries to remove the material and then cavitation wear occurs so usually cavitation wear as you can see occurs on uh, pump impellers and uh, turbine blades etc so uh, uh, the vapors uh, and the cavitations are also something that uh, this kind of way should be kept uh, in loop when you talk about turbo machineries especially pump impeller turbines compressor etc now we move to corrosive wear so as the name suggests corrosive wear refers to the form of wear in which oxidation or chemical intrusion occurs as you can see here uh, when you keep your uh, surface in a corrosive medium or environment then the fluid corrosive fluids or corrosive media or corrosive chemicals they attack and then they weaken the grain boundaries when the grain boundaries are weakened then the ability for grains to hold together is reduced then what happens is that during the wearing process the grains are basically ejected and they are removed so this is due to chemical and electro electrochemical reactions that take place on the surface the surface become weak and then the wear takes process wear takes place so this is corrosion corrosion assisted wear basically the corrosion weakens the surface and then during the wear process that weak surface is removed or ejected immediately next we are going to look into another types of wear the remaining ones we have got erosion fretting is something that we have discussed already fretting fatigue uh, fretting corrosion also occurs at interface that are subjected to very small recipro reciprocal moment however they are assisted by corrosion as well so basically in a wearing process different types of wear can also occur for instance adhesion because the one of the surface is soft and then the other is hard then you can have abrasion because there is a particle third body particle which is in between then if there is some kind of a cyclic load then 
fretting or fatigue or subsurface fatigue can occur then if the environment has corrosion or corrosive media then it can be corrosive as well so different types of wear can occur simultaneously as well next we can see erosion wear erosion wear occurs due to loose particles that impinge on the surface like for aircrafts uh, what happens is that the sand goes into the turbine and that sand basically hits the turbine so hard that it basically uh, goes on to removing the material from the surface as well so students here in this uh, piping you will see the effect of erosive wear and uh, if you have got a coating and if you don't have a coating then what happens so you can see that the slurry particles are eating the coating and the metal itself so in 5 to 10 years what happens is that as the erosion progresses then leakage occurs so that is a very very common problem in piping system which is the piping leakage however if you've got a very reliable and durable coating systems then what will happen is that it is going to resist the erosion process and uh, the coating will not be eaten very quickly due to the erosion process that occurs uh, due to the slurry which is uh, being transported in the piping system so depending on the application and depending on the type of coating the reliability of coating perhaps you can control the um, reliability for plant and equipment as well so erosive wear fretting wear impact wear are basically these are some of the remaining types of wear we have got deformation wear as well where deformation wear is caused by excessive temperature during the machining or during the uh, manufacturing process you have got tool and that tool is basically machining the surface so when the temperature increases due to friction then what happens is that the material becomes soft when the material becomes soft and you are increasingly applying the load then it becomes soft and it deforms so when it deforms then the shape of the tool cutting tool also changes as you can see in this bulk you can see that the flank shape of the flank or shape of the tool where the cutting action takes place has become soft due to high heat uh, that had occurred so uh, this occurs due to excessive speed and excessive feed rate that is given to the surface so these were some of the types of wear uh, that occurs uh, for different types of materials here we have got an example in which we can see the details of wearing mechanism and micro cracks plastic deformation and abrasion all together have occurred uh, this is basically a uh, silicon nitride si3 n4 and, and cubic uh, boron nitride uh, cutting tool and that cutting tool uh, was going to mill uh, cast iron and you can see that what are the different types of uh, deformation where okay uh, you can see uh, cutting abrasive wear as well and you can see some kind of uh, cracks that have also emanated during the wear or during the machining process so in one single go you can observe different types of wear that occur during the uh, sliding process or during the machining process the 43 series that was the best on the market when we launched it but we know that the competitors they will chase us so we always have to develop something new something better to be number one that was a really big challenge you want to make something better and better because it's important for the customer. My name is Jan Enqvist. I'm responsible for the coating of the insert. In the 43 generation, the big invention was we have controlled the lunar oxide growth to a certain crystal direction. We call it Inveio coating. It was really great, but we know that we can do it better. What about if we, for example, start to control the inner layer as well and try to improve the aluminum oxide even more? So you get a plastic deformation of the coatings. So instead of having cracks in the coating, you get a very controlled deformation and a controlled wear. And this really improvement in performance. Sounds easy, right? Put it together and get the best product out in the market. Before we launch it, we make what we call a field test and test it against our old grade, but also against competitors. In this process, this time, we saw huge improvements. It's the best on the market. 
So students, we will see how for the drill bits, uh, the wear is analyzed and how it affects the inner hole quality roughness. You can see how rough the surface is. So what governs these things, how wear is analyzed is something that we will learn. Eel movement of the drill and affect hole quality, drill life and reliability. Chip formation is acceptable when chips can be evacuated from the drill without disturbance. The start chip from entry into the workpiece is always long and does not create any problems. Chips are formed from the center to the outer corner of the drill. Examine the chips. If they are long and bent instead of curled, this means that chip jamming has occurred. Examine the hole. If chip jamming has occurred, an uneven surface will be visible. The best way to identify excessive tool wear is to listen during drilling. A consistent sound indicates good chip evacuation but an interrupted sound typically means there is chip jamming. In addition to poor chip control, there are a number of other factors that could indicate excessive tool wear, including a rise in machine power, increased exit burr, excessive heat or noise generation, and, of course, tool breakage. When examining a solid carbide drill, note that there are many different types of tool wear. A built-up edge can be caused by any of a number of factors. You can avoid this condition by increasing the cutting speed, using a coated drill with sharper cutting edge, and using an external cutting fluid with a good percentage of oil. Chipping on the edge corner can be prevented by carefully monitoring your operation. Check to make sure the fixturing and tool holder are stable. Check radial runout and the cutting fluid supply you may also need to decrease the feed rate. Another common issue is large wear on the cutting edge. You can prevent this by decreasing cutting speed, increasing the feed rate, or changing to a harder grade. It may also be necessary to increase the fluid supply. Chipping on the cutting edge may also lead to operational problems. Avoid this by checking the setup for unstable conditions and making sure you don't wait too long to replace the drill. If allowable wear is exceeded, you can damage your workpiece. Wear on circular lands can be prevented by checking the radial runout, decreasing the cutting speed, or changing to a harder grade. In some cases, it may be necessary to strengthen the cutting fluid with neat oil or stronger emulsion. Production issues can also be caused by wear on the chisel edge. Increasing the cutting speed or decreasing the feed rate should prevent this from happening. You should also check the drill dimensions to ensure that the chisel edge is within manufacturing specs. So students, uh, now that we have gone through different types of wear, we are going to see and can go through one concept, which is what is the difference between hardness and wear? As you guys know already, hardness is basically the resistance to plastic deformation or resistance to be able to be scratched or not scratched. However, wear is basically that after the scratching, whether the material is removed or not. So wear is resistance is basically the ability or ability of a material to resist the removal of material. Whereas hardness is whether you can scratch is how big or how much plastic deformation you can make, how big indent you can make is something what is hardness. Now hardness and wear resistance are very different. A material can be very good in wear resistance, but it cannot be hard. It may be it is only tough. However, a material can be hard and it can have good wear resistance also, and a material can be hard and it can have poor res wear resistance also. All of these things depends on what is going on between the hard material and hard material or what is going on between the hard material and soft material how much amount of loading i am going to apply okay between the sliding how fast is the sliding speed okay what is the cyclic stress okay whether there is lubrication between them present or not present whether there is third body abrasive particles present or not present there are different amount of factors that will define whether the wear property whether whether you're doing the cooling properly or not so all of these things are going to define whether you how good your surface is going to perform even though the hardness is low however it can perform very well depending on the situation and depending on the environment in which the wear process is taking place okay so i have uh, this is was all about uh, wear uh, wear and the concept of wear what a concept of wear resistance and what are the different types of wear 
uh, I have attached one case study for you guys to go through uh, on erosion wear. Uh, what are the different uh, erosion wear processes that occur on aircrafts and what uh, Qatar Airways and Gulf Airways and uh, uh, airways which are in hot medium where we have got sand dunes and desert. What kind of erosion problems are those uh, companies facing? What Boeing and Airbus are facing for the turbine blades? which are going erosion process due to the sands and due to the uh, dust and sand which goes into the turbine blades in Gulf countries where you have only desert region. Okay, So I have included a case study for you guys to go through later on uh, in your slides. So this was all about the end of wear and wear resistance. Uh, next we are going to go through briefly about the wear resistance measurement techniques which are available. Thank you guys for listening to the video.